So I'd just really like to welcome everybody to this second session of the Early Career Researchers Seminar Series that's hosted by the Cambridge Reproduction um, SRI. And, and first of all, I really want to thank the, the speakers that uh, are speaking today and the others that have signed up um, to do it later in the year. Um, and also to the team of coordinators, um, Daphne, Tara, Ellen and Grace, who have, have put this together. Um, so just to explain a little bit um, about what the SRI is, um, it, it's an interdisciplinary initiative um, that brings together researchers from all across the university um, who have interest in any aspect of reproduction at all. So everything from science, technology, medicine, arts and humanities. We're going to power on to the next talk, um, which uh, comes from Juan Castillo Fernandez, who has, is based in uh, the Abraham Institute. Um, and he's gonna talk also sticking with this theme of, of reproductive aging, but from the perspective of the U site. Okay, thanks for uh, the opportunity to, to present this study. Um, so, uh, this study was looking at the um, at the effects of maternal age on the quality of the oocytes or at the molecular level, meaning uh, the transcriptome and the methylome of the oocytes. And for this, we used uh, mice uh, as as a model. Uh, this study was recently published by, by the end of last year in in Aging Cell. Okay, so first of all, I'm, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the oocyte. So uh, and why is it important for us to study this in terms of, of, of reproduction? So first of all, the oocyte con contributes to genetic material uh, to, to the embryo. And among other things, it, it also contributes to the machinery that allows for cell division. It contributes to, to reactivate the genome of the embryo. So new genes will be expressed once the oocyte is fertilized and most of the machinery that allows this, it's already stored in the oocyte. Uh, the oocyte also uh, provides uh, the power for, for, for the embryo to start developing. And another aspect or another molecular aspect is that it provides some epigenetic marks that are essential later on during development. These epigenetic marks might not be doing anything in the oocyte at the moment, but they will uh, have consequences uh, um, later on during development. And any of these of the of the factors that are listed here can be affected by adverse uh, physiological state of expo or exposures, and maternal age is one of those uh, physiological states. Just uh, natural aging uh, might be affecting the quality of this. So now I'm going to uh, talk about the, the particularities of the transcriptome of, and the methylome of the oocyte, uh, just pointing out the main differences that we observe uh, compared to somatic cells. So first of all, uh, the, the oocyte um, continues developing after, after birth of, of the female mice. So it, start, it's, it grows uh, in size and it also has a lot of molecular changes. Uh, Another important difference with somatic cells is that 50% of the genes that are expressed in the oocyte are not uh, reference genes. And from the ones that are reference genes, 10% of them have alternative promoters, meaning that, again, uh, it will not be the same transcript that we will observe in, in somatic cells. Then uh, as the oocyte uh, starts growing and developing uh, after birth, then it reaches a state of transcriptional arrest meaning that uh, genes stop being uh, transcribed or expressed. And this can be easily observed with, as, as chromatin uh, configuration changes, uh, meaning that the DNA within the oocyte starts acquiring a different configuration. So in this, in this image, we can, see, uh, we can see the oocyte and we can see here uh, uh, the DNA that is being stained we can see that in, in a configuration where it's not compacted, uh, which is termed as non-surrounded nucleolus, 
we, we observe something like this. But then when the, when the oocyte matures and reaches the transcriptionally inactive state or, or silent state, uh, the DNA starts condensing around the nucleolus, and this is uh, known as a, a surrounded nucleolus uh, state. So just to, to put this in terms of, of competence, so the non-surrounded nucleolus state would be transcriptionally active and the surrounded nucleolus would be transcriptionally inactive, but this, will, this is considered mature and will allow for meiotic competence. So also relevant for this study is that the configuration of the, of these, of the chromatin changes with age. So in this column, we have an um, uh, increase uh, ages of, of mice. And here we can see in the third column that the proportion of surrounded nucleolus uh, oocytes also increases. So this is something that we have to take into consideration for our study. Now moving on to the methylum. So uh, once again, uh, when, when just right after birth, the methylum or the DNA or the genome of the oocyte is practically unmethylated and it starts acquiring gradually methylation as it develops until it reaches uh, the same state where the transcriptional arrest happens. Uh, and this is because methylation in the oocyte uh, happens as a consequence of transcription. So uh, it, is, it is believed or it's known that 90% of the methylation establishment can be attributed to transcription events. Uh, so the profile that we get at this stage for in, in an oocyte is, is for DNA methylation is bimodal and cluster meaning that with, with clustered, what I'm trying to say is that, for example, if we look at these tracks in, in the top figure, the first track would be the outside methylum, and we have genes represented as blue boxes. So we can see that the whole gene body would be uh, either methylated or unmethylated. Methylated would be the black lollipops, unmethylated the white ones. Uh, um, opposite to, to, somatic, uh, to the somatic methylum, in which we can see for the same gene, some regions are methylated or unmethylated. In this case, uh, promoters, which tend to be CPG islands, are, if, if the gene is active, it's, they are usually unmethylated. But we also can have cases in which uh, the promoter is methylated, the gene is not expressed, but we can see uh, not methylated positions in the gene body. So that's what I'm, uh, I mean with uh, with cluster domains. So we, we see these huge chunks of, of the DNA that either methylated or unmethylated. Then with bimodal, what, I'm, um, what I mean is that, for example, in the sperm, we can see that uh, most of the DNA is fully methylated. So we only see one peak here in this histogram, while for, in the oocyte, we see regions of the genome that would be unmethylated or uh, fully methylated, giving us this bimodal distribution. And the same thing can be observed with these with these tracks in the in the oocyte. On the top, we can see some regions that are fully methylated, and some others that are uh, unmethylated. While for the sperm, most of it is fully methylated. Now, uh, the relevance, as it was pointed in the talk before, is that uh, with uh, an increase in maternal age, there is a, a reduction in fertility, and we think that the oocyte quality might be playing a role in this. And that's why we, we wanted to study this. So, uh, but there are some complications why this has not been looked into detail before. And many of them are technical uh, complications. One is uh, there are very few cells available. If, if we think about uh, the classical molecular techniques for interrogating uh, um, DNA or transcription, we need thousands of cells for that. So that's one of, of the first technical complications. Also, the collection of oocytes is, uh, is difficult. There's, there is a limited number of them. Um, and then other, other technical issues could be that not all cells are identical. We might collect a bunch of them, but there's heterogeneity uh, be, uh, between them. So even if they come from the same individual, there might be some differences. And given uh, that there, is, there are differences between them, so it, it wouldn't mean the same capturing different measures, molecular measures from the same, from different cells. It would be more informative if we could get more than a single measure from each cell. So recently with the development of single cell uh, techniques uh, that allowed us to, to, to study the oocytes in, uh, as we wanted to. 
So the question that we had for this study, first of all, was are the transcriptomes and the methylops of young and age oocytes different from each other? Uh, the second question is, do we observe more heterogeneity in the age group? And third, uh, is there an oocyte quality, is the oocyte quality being compromised with age or is just uh, irrelevant? Uh, okay, so, and so now, uh, first of all, uh, we collected oocytes from, from young mice and old mice. And from each oocyte, uh, RNA and DNA were extracted so that we can perform single cell RNA sequencing and single cell by solvate sequencing uh, from, from each oocyte. Now, uh, coming to the results, the first thing that we observed looking at the transcript come was that the HO sites were expressing less genes uh, in average, or at least we were detecting less of them. In average, we detected roughly a thousand uh, genes that were, uh, uh, that were not expressed in the, in the age ones. Uh, as we can see in this box plot, so that the, the difference was significant. And then we perform using uh, the whole the whole transcript, and we perform a principal component analysis just to see if if we were, if, if age is, is an important factor that could segregate uh, the oocytes uh, based on their on their expression profiles. And indeed, we were able to segregate groups, not perfectly. Uh, there was a bit of overlap. And as we can see from PC one, uh, the young cells, the red ones, presented a, a just a one peak in the middle, while the H ones presented uh, a multimodal distribution that which would mean there's some heterogeneity there. Another important uh, observation from principal component one is that we're not segregating perfectly or, or at a great extent uh, by age. So there is something else uh, that is more important driving differences in the transcript term. While for principal component two, we can see that uh, we can almost perfectly segregate the two groups. So uh, if we represent this as um, um, in a heat map, we could say uh, and try to find the associations between uh, the principal components and, and, and age, we can see that principal component two is the most strongly associated, but there's also a contribution to principal component one, four and five. Um, so we selected five principal components after, uh, after getting rid of, of the technical noise in our data. But we were still curious to find out what's, what was explaining principal component one. So we thought that it might be the chromatin configuration as I mentioned during the introduction. Uh, we didn't uh, assess chromatin configuration at the time of collection. So we didn't know the real chromatin configuration for these all sites depicted here. But from the literature we, we got a list of genes that were uh, reported to be upregulated in the surrounded nucleolus oocytes, the mature oocytes. So we used those genes to try to classify our oocytes. And this is the heat map that we got. So red would be a uh, highly expressed. So this, this cluster here were the ones that we predict or, or we infer are going to be oocytes with uh, surrounded nucleolus or mature configuration. So the next question was, uh, is the proportion of these different? Because we would expect them to be higher in the, in the HL side. So for the H ones, we found that eight were uh, in the mature state, 37 in the immature state. For the young ones, 12 were in the mature state and 30 in the, in the NSN or immature state. Uh, we perform a proportion test and the difference is not significant. Uh, our, we would need greater numbers for this, for at, for, for, but for the sake of this study, this difference is not significant. So we added this information to, to our heat map uh, with the principal components. And, and, and uh, in fact, chromatin configuration, it's mostly explaining principal component one. So now we know that chromatin configuration is the most important driver of variation in our data set. And then H being the second one. Um, but by definition, principal components are orthogonal to each other. So meaning that what it's explained by principal component one is not explained by principal component two. However, we observed that H is affecting four of the first five principal components. We wanted to capture all that variation attributed or, or caused by H. So we then um, uh, 
use the data-driven approach without labeling our oocytes as young or aged. Uh, we wanted to cluster them using a, a, a just an unsupervised model without any labels. And this is what we got. We got four labels. Then if we label that, those, those four clusters with, with, with the information that we know about their chromatin configuration and about their age group, this is what we get. So in the bottom, we get two groups of age oocytes that are uh, that were inferred to be NSN or immature. Then we get young oocytes that are immature. And then as we move up, we start seeing these triangles, which mean that these are the, the mature SN oocytes. And then the fourth cluster would be both age and young, but all of them are triangles, all of them are mature oocytes. So we can think of this as a trajectory from age immature oocytes to young and mature oocytes. So we then perform differential, uh, differentially, um, we then look for differentially expressed genes among these four clusters. And this is the list of the top uh, uh, 100 genes. And as, as you can see, many of them have, uh, have roles in, in, in printing or, or oocyte fertilization competence. We formally tested for, for maternal effect genes. So these genes could uh, become important later during development of the embryo. And we found an enrichment, a significant enrichment for these genes, meaning that uh, that there is some gain of competence as we move along this trajectory. Okay, then we also tested for differential expression, but this time using the labels of H and of or of H and young that we that we already know. And we identified more than 500 differential expressed genes. Most of them were uh, then regulated in the age population, uh, but most of them have very tiny effects, as you can see from, from the plot in the middle. However, when we uh, uh, plotted a heat map with these with this 560 genes, we observed that there is a third cluster coming up, uh, which we term the young-like oocytes. So these, these are originally uh, labeled as H oocytes, for, for, but for some reason, if we look at the gene expression levels, they share some genes, uh, some levels with the old ones, but they also share some with the young ones. So they're kind of in the kind of yeah, an intermediate phenotype between young and aged. So, uh, but this was also an indication that there's heterogeneity in the age group. Like we have two 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 subsets in here, so we wanted to test formally for for that. So similar to a differential expression test, we tested for differential variability. In this case, uh, we observed that the significant ones were mostly gains in variability or higher variability in the age group. And if we plot these as distances uh, in a two uh, in a two dimension two dimensional plot, we can see so for here each black dot is one is one oocyte. We can see the distances between the oocytes in the young group are closer than the distances in the age group. So we, we can say that uh, there's more heterogeneity or that heterogeneity is being increased with increased age. Then we move on to the DNA methylation profiles. The first thing we looked at is just global methylation. Um, and we observed that the age group has a slightly lower uh, global methylation than the young group. And when plotting this in a principal component uh, uh, plot, we do not see very huge uh, segregation or differences between, between the oocytes. And if we plot methylation in, in the, these cluster domains that I mentioned in the beginning, we also see that they look virtually the same. The ones that are supposed to be fully methylated are so, the ones that are lowly methylated are so, and we define a third category, which are those regions that do not fall uh, in, in, the, in the last two categories. Uh, regardless of having virtually the same uh, methylone profiles, we tested for, for differentially methylated regions. We were able to identify 166 uh, differentially methylated regions. Most of them were uh, hypomethylation events, uh, as we would expect from, from seeing that there's uh, less average methylation in the age oocytes. And 
So interestingly, most of the, so we would, as I mentioned in the introduction, 90% of the methylation is being attributed to, in the outside at least, is, is attributed to transcriptional events, but we only observe coordinate changes between gene expression and methylation in 23 genes, meaning that most of, uh, of these changes are not happening at, at, at the time of transcription. However, for the ones that we do observe that there, there are coordinate changes, we observe that uh, when we see a loss of methylation, we also see a, a, a loss of, of um, gene expression. And here, when I say methylation is methylation on the whole gene body. Uh, okay, and the, the last thing we checked was uh, imprinting. So we know imprinting is very important for development. I mentioned that some epigenetic states are important. If uh, these have to be uh, well, uh, um, um, these have to be set in the outside in the correct manner. If not, the embryo cannot develop properly. So the ones that we expect them, we expect to be unmethylated or methylated in both groups, the young and the age, and the ones that we expect to be fully methylated are so. So here we can say that we could not find differences at, uh, at the regions controlling imprinted genes. So in summary, uh, we were able to, to observe that there's a reduced number of detected genes in, in, in those sites from aged mice. Uh, and there's also an increased heterogeneity with increased age. Uh, we were able to observe alter expression of maternal effect genes, which is important because this, they, they can have an impact on the development of the embryo. Uh, and we also observe coordinate changes between gene expression and DNA methylation. Of course, this is uh, lo looking at mice. Uh, there's a need for human studies and, and this become, it becomes more relevant now uh, in this uh, society as, as, as the age of childbirth is being delayed more and more. So lastly, I just want to thank all the people in the lab and especially the people that uh, contributed to, to this, this study in particular. And I'm happy to take any questions or, yeah, thank you.